We got a very interesting video for you today. We're gonna hop into the do's and don'ts of surfing on North Shore and some do's and don'ts are gonna apply to everywhere, actually most of them, but there's gonna be a lot that are specific to here on North Shore because it is such an interesting place with a lot of surf culture and history. And things that apply here don't necessarily apply everywhere else in the world. So with that, we'll just get started. If you guys could like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications, we're on. Let me know if you like videos like this, and yeah, leave a comment. All right, so we're gonna start with the do's. Do number one is listen to the lifeguards. There's these lifeguard towers everywhere here on North Shore. And if you're doing something that you shouldn't be doing, they will definitely let you know. So don't try to go against whatever they're saying because you see that all the time here. Even on flat days, people just who don't know what they're doing just want to disobey the lifeguards for some reason. But they're here for a reason and they know what they're doing. So it is a good call to listen to them. And they're a very good judge, especially in wintertime, of who can handle what type of waves just by watching people walk down. It's crazy. Like just by the way you're holding your surfboard or the way you're about to like jump in the water, people can tell if you know what you're doing or not. And they are very, very good at it. So listen to them. If you have any questions about all the spots here as well, ask them questions because it's better to be safe than sorry. And yeah, same goes for everywhere with lifeguards. Do number two is be respectful. This applies to pretty much everywhere while surfing, but it really applies to the locals if you're at a different spot. Like when I go places, if there's locals out, I'm just like, I get out of their way, no matter what. Which in return should happen here as well on the shore. <laughs> Not necessarily saying it has to, but being respectful will help you get more waves, especially here, just being nice. Okay, real quick, I have a very, very salty box of electrolyte drink mix called Element. They're my absolute favorite, favorite electrolytes out there. They're amazing. I don't leave home without them, ever. They just send me every type of flavor. Element has none of the junk. There's no sugar, no coloring, no artificial ingredients, no gluten, no fillers and no BS. Element can help prevent and eliminate headaches, muscle cramps, fatigue, sleeplessness, and other common symptoms of electrolyte deficiency. When you sweat, the primary electrolyte lost is sodium. Athletes can lose up to seven grams per day when sodium is not replaced. It's common to experience muscle cramps and fatigue. Element is used by everyone in the NBA, NFL, NHL, Olympic athletes, Navy SEALs, everyday moms and dads, exercise enthusiasts, and surfers like me. I love it. Right now, Element is offering my viewers a free sample pack with any order. It's right here. That's eight single serving packets free with any Element order. This is a great way to try all eight flavors or share Element with a salty friend. Get yours at drinkelement.com forward slash koa. This deal is only available through my link. You must go to drinklmnt.com forward slash koa. Do number three is having the right equipment because if you are coming to Hawaii or North Shore, specifically from somewhere else, say California, you might need a different style of board, maybe not as light of a board, maybe a normal foam board, not an epoxy, or just even the right fins. So having the right equipment is very important to be able to perform how you want to because everyone's surfing to progress, you know, and have fun. But that involves fins, surfboards, the size of surfboards like these, like knowing what you're going to get into, like doing your research beforehand, getting the right equipment to be prepared for the situations you're gonna put yourself in is very important. I think one big thing with equipment is wearing a leash. A lot of times people just stop wearing leashes on even just a small day or they just underestimate the day and they lose their board and hit someone with it or they lose it and get themselves in a bad situation. So having the proper equipment is very important. Wear a leash all the time is good. 
this video we're just gonna be hopping around North Shore to every beach we we're just at rock piles we're at my house showing the surfboards and now we're at Rockies and we'll probably head over head over to pipe sunset who knows but rule number four is know what the swell is doing because a lot of times here and elsewhere it can look literally like this and an hour later it could be like 10 feet so it's important in my opinion that you know what the swell is doing if it's going to pick up or dropping can help as well to know like time your sessions but really knowing when the swell is picking up especially at places that get massive and can be dangerous like north shore knowing that around the timing just doing your forecasting talking to people even just talking to the lifeguards like i said before just knowing when the swell like what the swell is doing can be very helpful to keep yourself in a out of dangerous situations because north shore is so easy to underestimate the ocean and its power like you could jump in right here see just right there right now and be just swept down or out to sea just because of the currents you just you never really know so do number five this is something that i would not have seen myself saying or even thinking about up until recently with my old age coming on but stretching and warming up before sessions i used to crack up tease people who are on the beach doing their warm-ups i think it's very important to do this to prevent injuries now in my old age warming up the muscles and the joints getting flexible before you go out can really help prevent injuries all right be sure to if you haven't already click that subscribe button and click that like button but we are down here at pipe for do number six is you do want to know your limits and your ability and capability surfing so if you are ever in doubt don't go out is the famous thing if in doubt don't go out because places like this can be very very dangerous so knowing your limits is very important to keeping yourself safe and everyone you're surfing with safe and the people that are gonna have to rescue you safe yeah. know your limits do number seven I would recommend if you guys are this is kind of more for beginners but if you do come to North Shore and you're like, whoa, I want to surf, but I'm not good. I've only surfed in California. It's always good to maybe take a lesson. So there's tons of lessons over here in Hollywood and Waikiki. And there's a lot of local people you can get lessons from, a lot of professional surfers. So be sure to try to find one of them to get a, one of them to get a lesson from. Oh yeah, number seven, take a lesson if you want. Do number eight. Something you should do is time your paddle outs because especially here when the waves are kind of bigger getting out to the surf spot is all about timing so like pipe and stuff this is something that i still am continuously working on is to time like the sets when they're coming in when to jump in the water and like how fast to paddle when to hold back like when you see a lot of waves coming so this is one i think that is very tricky to master because I don't know one person who's actually mastered it because everyone I know professional surfers still get smoked but a lot of people who work on timing their paddle outs make it out a lot easier than people who don't because it can be the worst way to start your session especially when we're paddling out to pipe when you miss time your paddle out you can burn so much more energy than you needed to rather than just making it out super quick. So sometimes it's best not to get super excited and just rush out. It might be better to just take your time and time the set. So, yeah. Okay, number nine on the list of do's is to take turns with the people you're surfing with. And I know a lot of people out there are like, oh, you don't take turns with anyone, but honestly, I do. I take turns with my friends and whoa, 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 whoa. What is going on? Look at his shoes. This guy's out of, this is elementary school right here. What the f What was 
number nine? Uh, take turns while surfing. Okay. Number nine on the list of do's, take turns while surfing. So, when you get out to the lineup, try to get into a rhythm of taking turns catching waves. And like, people have priority, go, and then if they just caught a wave, they should be letting you go. So if the whole surf lineup everywhere on this planet worked like that, there would never be any conflict. Which it's never going to, but the more people that know that, the better. We just came down to Sunset Point, completely flat. But number 10 on our list of do's is clean up your trash. Because a lot of people come down to surf and they do like a big beach day with it and then they leave a lot of trash, cans, plastic, whatever they brought with them. So number 10, just please clean up your trash. This goes for everywhere in the planet. You are, not even in surfing, but we as surfers gotta be very conscious of how we treat the ocean and the beach. So. Clean up your trash, anywhere you go. Okay, and now the moment you guys have been waiting for is our don't list, which I thought what better place to go to explain our don'ts rather than pipeline. So we came back to the real access of pipe, and yeah, we'll get started. Don't number one is paddle. When a surfer is on a wave and you just caught a wave or you're coming out, if you're on the inside, do not paddle towards where that surfer is on the wave because you're gonna collide with them or mess them up. What you should do is go further into the impact zone and take it on the head rather than get in that person's way. So that is rule number one because that is the most frustrating thing as a surfer. I'll do that for anyone. I'll get out of the way into the impact zone, take one on the head, get a whole set on the head rather than get in someone's way of them on a wave. It is the most frustrating thing ever. So that is number one, top, top number one. Do not paddle into a surfer's line. They have the right of way. You are in charge of getting yourself out of the way. Rule number one, okay. Don't number two, do not paddle straight out around everyone and try to get a wave. Because like, that's the last thing you should do. That is a reason for you to get dropped in on. So like if you say you're at pipe, Someone just comes out, even if it's like someone we know. No one ever, even out of our little crew, will ever come straight out after we're sitting there, sit on, sit right behind us and catch a wave. So that's like, just a big no-no. You just don't do that, no matter where you are. Yeah, number two. Number three, this one is North Shore specific. Just don't go out to pipe. Just don't go out, it's not worth it. You see the best surfers in the world, from around the world, just have the worst most frustrating sessions because I can't get a wave. It's already too crowded. Don't do it, I don't recommend it. It's dangerous and yeah, don't do it. Number four would be snaking, which is when someone's paddling for a wave, you paddle right around them to get a little deeper so you can call them off and like have priority. That is, that's just not okay. You should like, in the do's we said earlier, take turns. So snaking is just not a good thing. You just are someone who's a nightmare to surf with. And I don't know what the comments are gonna be like on this video, but this is just like one of the, you don't do it. Especially if you go to somewhere you're not from and there's a bunch of locals out, you just don't, don't snake anyone, don't paddle around anyone while they're going for a wave because when you start paddling for a wave, you can sometimes move a little tiny bit out of position and give a little bit of room for someone to just hop in and snake you. So, don't do that. Don't number five is drop in on people, unless they deserve it, which I'll get to. But you should never drop in on anyone because it can put them in harm's way, especially at a lot of waves here on North Shore. It can be very dangerous. You can hurt someone, you can hurt yourself, and you could get beat up for it. But there are, some instances where it is okay to drop it on someone, like if they just snaked you, like I just said, I will drop in on them if they just snake me. So, it's not something you should do unless it's called for. It's crazy how much this place just changes during winter time. It looks nothing like normal dangerous pipeline, but it is, deep down it is. This brings us to number six on the don't list is paddle for a wave like you're going and then pull back. 
because you were intimidated or anything. Because if you paddle for a wave and you don't go, to me in my mind, that's like automatic. Okay, this guy's not gonna go on any waves. He is not serious about catching waves. And right away, it's like, this guy's just gonna waste waves if we let him go. So don't paddle for a wave and pull back. Don't even paddle for the wave if you're not serious about going. Number seven on the don'ts list is panic when you're in a stressful situation because it is very easy to start panicking when you're here on North Shore especially if you haven't been here or you're thinking about coming or you're just in a bad situation. The worst thing you can do is panic because it leads to nothing good. The best thing you can do is try to relax, stay calm, try to get some deep breaths in and just be like, you know what, whatever the situation is, say you're getting caught inside or you're underwater, just tell yourself, I'm gonna make it through this. I know what I'm doing because I've put myself in a situation where I was comfortable and I'm going to be okay. Just don't panic, try to remain calm no matter what's happening and the waves will eventually stop or push you into a different area that you'll be able to catch your breath and be okay. Or you lose your surfboard, I see that all the time. People panic when they lose their surfboards. Their leash gets blown off or they break their leash or they break their board. Just don't panic. Doesn't help your situation whatsoever. This brings us to our last don't, which is don't number eight. And let me know if you guys have any other do's or don'ts you wanna leave in the comments. It'd be great to see. Um, if you guys like these kind of videos, we'll put more in. But our last don't is very North Shore specific. So this road I'm driving on right here is called Kainui. It goes pretty much from, it's pretty much the whole North Shore of surf spots that you'd wanna surf. It's just don't drive fast on this road. Sometimes people are so excited to go surf because the waves are firing and they're just flying it down here. And families live here, kids live here. They'll run out into the street and you don't wanna hit someone or hurt someone or drive like so that was our last don't for North Shore. Just don't drive too fast on this back road or anywhere around the residential neighborhoods around here either. Because it's just, there's no point. You look like a and you could possibly hurt someone. So that is all. Let me know if you guys like these type of videos. If you want more like this, leave comments. Let me know what you think on your do's and don'ts. Like this video and subscribe to the channel. Thanks again for watching. We will see you next week on Wednesday.